Hi guys, our names are Jiwan, Sofia, Jennifer and Michiel and we are going to introduce you to our Swedish friend Knut Wixel. Yeah, it turned out that mastering Swedish pronunciation took a little more time than the actual research. So whenever you hear the name Knut, Nuke, Knut or even Frank, they're all the same. Thank you for your understanding and here we go. Nuke Wixel was born on December 20th, 1851 in Stockholm to a Swedish middle class family. His father descended from a farming family and was a provision dealer. In 1869, he passed his school examination where then he was accepted to Uppsala to study mathematics, physics and astronomy. He depended his income on public lectures and publication. In 1855, he got a major grant and started to pursue economics more seriously. His interest for economics and social studies was heavily influenced by an English doctor, George Drysdale, who talked about the problem of population. He decided to visit several different universities for four years, then returned to Stockholm, but was too notorious and unqualified to teach. In 1887, he married his wife, Anna Bugi. In 1990, at the age of 48, he started his first teaching position at the University of Lund. He taught very provocative lectures on topics like prostitution, drunkenness, poverty, and overpopulation, which resulted in being jailed for two months. He taught for 16 years, then retired, and was well known to be a father figure at Stockholm schools. On May 3, 1926, he passed away at the age of 74. People will describe him as a friendly and quirky individual who defended his beliefs. During his time as a professor, Knut Witzkoll was advocating of limiting the population by the application of birth control, which almost cost him his career and which accounts for his eventual changeover from mathematics to economics. This was influenced when he received a personal copy of Malthus's Principles of Population. Ultimately, Knut Witzkoll believed it was the best interest of the population to arrest excessive procreation, which caused poverty and dreariness of home life for the majority of urban workers. As a result, Knut Wiskel had the reputation of a moral nihilist, which was also known in the sector of neo Malthusians. One of the main events during Wiskel's time was World War I, where he wrote mostly on monetary policies. He insisted that the proper goal for Swedish monetary policy should be gradual restoration of the 1904 level of prices by application of deflationary credit and fiscal techniques. This was the time when Sweden abandoned the gold standard, which Wiskel believed society must not sanction and perpetuate the arbitrary distribution of wealth in favor of debtors that a protracted inflation brings about. Knut Wiksel was a great criticizer of Karl Marx's labor theory of value. Marx tried to find an objective measure for the value of commodities in order to explain why they trade, which was labor. Wiksel, on the other hand, was a great supporter of marginalism. Instead of considering an objective measure, marginalism argued that values of commodities are subjective. It takes into account an individual's marginal utility and the principle of diminishing returns. Let's take for example a chair. Karl Marx would argue that the value of the chair is equal to the amount of labor hours that are put into it. Okay Marx would Wixel say, but what if we got already 10 chairs? Then the value of one extra chair to me would be much less compared to the first chair I bought. Moving on, Wixel's famous works and writings are mainly a synthesis of the theories and ideas of other economists. One of his biggest contributions to economics was on interest in prices. Wixel's theory was in many aspects similar to Fisher's quantity theory of money, which is money times velocity equals the price level times the real output. Previous to Wixel, the standard view considered only the direct effect of expenditory money supply to rising price levels. Wixel elaborated on this theory by introducing an indirect effect. He made an important distinction between the real interest, which equates desired saving with intended investment, and the market rate. If for whatever reason this natural rate would exceed the bank loan rate, entrepreneur investors will wish to borrow more from banks than savers deposit there. Since banks accommodate these extra loan demands by creating check-in deposits, a deposit expansion occurs. This expansion tries to meet the excess aggregate demand implicit in the investment saving gap. It will eventually transform into excess effective aggregate demand that spills over in the commodity market to put upward pressure on prices. This upward pressure in prices will exist for as long as the interest differential lasts. Wixel passes the test of being a quantity theorist with flying colors. 
He was an advocate of price stability and he believed that the monetary authority is able to stabilize price levels through control of the stock of money and interest rates. So guys, this is a pretty good theory if you consider that nowadays the main aim of central banks like the Fed and the ECB is precisely that. Controlling the money supply and interest rates in order to create price stability by targeting an inflation of 2%. So, where are Newt Wixel's ideas today? Like Mihail mentioned, Newt's main ideas of interest, prices, and the quantity theory of money were overshadowed by Irving Fisher's simplified ideas, in the sense that they were intellectual rivals. Little did they know that their main debate would be addressed by Keynesians and monetarists decades later. Wixel's idea of the natural rate of interest would go on to influence Milton Friedman, who developed the idea of the natural rate of unemployment, a concept that is alive and well in many economics classes today. Furthermore, his rejection of Karl Marx's labor theory of value, as well as his ideas of the subjective nature of value, have solidified his place in history as the father of marginal productivity. Today, the name Newt Wixel is most associated with the Stockholm School of Economic Thought, of which he is considered to be the father figure. Economists of the school advocated for policies which balanced capitalism with socialism, and social equality with entrepreneurship. Perhaps most importantly, Wixel and the Stockholm School of Economic Thought would go on to significantly influence John Maynard Keynes, arguably one of the most important economists in history. Wixel was coined the economist's economist for his ability to refine and integrate existing economic theories. But based on what we've seen here today, perhaps he was not given as much credit as he deserves. From all of us, thank you for listening, and we hope that you enjoyed our brief history of Newt Wixel.